I've been called a wog, dumb leb, asylum seeker, a wanker, dickhead, a fuckwit. If I keep calling myself names, I'm going to hit myself soon, David. I've been threatened with guns, I've been threatened with bats, I've been threatened with everything. I've been threatened with my life, I've been threatened once with a barrel. I think you, you held up a barrel and said, you're going home in this one, one bikey dude. So I've been threatened with all sorts of objects. It's all fun and games until actually I get hurt or someone pushes me. So I'm the sort of guy that, you know, no worries, no worries, you can say what you want. But as soon as you lose your cool and touch me, it's a different ball game. We're all going in the deep end real quick. But I can't forget my mission. I can't forget that this guy's upset and he's threatening me because I'm breaking his pride and I'm taking what he thinks he's stolen, what he, what he thinks he's won. It's a trophy at the end of the day. That asset that belongs to the bank is a trophy. I want it, he wants to keep it, and the banks want it. We all want it. Whoever gets it gets paid. There was this Italian guy. He was meant to be some sort of old school gangster from King's Cross. And he was doing a lot of time. He was, you know, bikey related. They repossessed a few Ferraris off him in Melbourne. They couldn't find the last car. Then they actually got some intel that the car might be with the ex-wife in Leichhardt in Sydney. This Ferrari was his favorite. It was a Bertinetta. It was a real one-off. He had an F1 gearbox. This thing was wow factor. I go out there and I make contact with the wife. She did not have in the car. I left her my card. Then he called me from jail. He says, what's making you go around my ex-wife's house? I said, look, we're looking for a Ferrari 1213. He goes, you took the ones in Melbourne, that's enough. I said, look, there's one more that they're looking for in Sydney. Now, I'm the agent they've given the job to. I'm just doing my job. There's no need to get upset. I won't go back there if you don't want me to. He says, no, don't go back there. He hung up on me. Then he called me a week later. He said, listen, are you going to keep going back there? I said, no, well, I'm not, but they might give it to another agent who will. And we became talkative over the phones and oh, I know him and he knows him and we know each other, we know similar people. He must have been a bit of a heavy bloke because he, he spent a lot of time on the phone from jail. Or well, he must have had a mobile phone in his cell, one of the two. He said, if I give you this card, Joe, you hold it for me, make sure no one repossesses it or the banks don't get their hands on it, I'll give you 20K. No, I said, you know, what's, what's the harm in saying no? Worst comes to worst, I'll take it and give it to the banks. Best case, I'll make $20,000 and I'll make a friend. So he said, I refuse you put that on a tow truck. I will not allow you to get a tow truck to touch my car. He said, no, you drive it. I said, I can't drive this. I've never driven a Ferrari in my life. He told me to drive it. I took it for a spin. Took the car, about a month with me. The banks haven't asked me about it. No one's asked me about it, so I'm happy. Then I got quite comfortable with it, so I started driving it around. And I took some photos of the car. They went around, they just spread, they went viral. This is back in the days when there was no social media like there is today. These photos went through my little network to the credit company who then sees the photos and I get head of collection room and says, you fucking beauty, when did you pick it up? And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, the Ferrari. I said, oh, the Ferrari, yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah, the Ferrari. It's, you know, I've switched on. I've caught on to what he's on about. So I'm focused on, you know, keeping my job with the banks, you know, and, and scraping through without them knowing how long I've had the car for. I forgot completely about our arrangement with, with, with this gangster that's in jail. Get it to the holding yard, drop it off. Bob's your uncle. I felt a sense of relief. Then I get a call about three, four weeks later. You fucking idiot. You motherfucker. Wait till I get out of jail. I said, listen, you dumb old fucking prick. Stop bringing my fucking phone. I should have just fucking took the car from the start and not talked to you at all. <laughs> You're giving me bloody anxiety. <laughs> and he went off his tits. He says, the fucking number plates are worth more than you, you little wanker, and he's going off his fucking head. I said, no doubt. I said, well, when you get out, make sure you make an effort to come and see me. Just remember, I'm the one who found the car and found your family members. It's gonna be hard to bloody get you back, dickhead, and I hung up on him. I didn't see him, I didn't meet him. A few years went by. I get a job in Smithfield for a few concrete pumps. I go out there, I'm in the office waiting for the director of this company, and this guy comes out, I'm in his waiting room, 
He goes, Joe, come to my office. Then I've looked up and I've seen photos of the Ferraris, that, the two in Melbourne and the one I was driving on the wall. And I said, oh shit, that's, this is the guy. I actually put it together and said, this is the guy. And then he looked at me and then we kind of worked it out who, who, who we are. And we kind of made friends, you know? It was all under the bridge. So he kind of like checkmated me into helping him and buying him time to pay off these cockering pumps because he said, I've you know, I'm built this business since I've been out of jail now, Joe, and rah, rah, rah. And I, and I was nice to him. I got, I'd done him a couple of favours, helped him out with those concrete pumps and getting them rectified, and it wasn't so bad after all. Are you still friends with him now? I don't think so. I think I ended up knocking off the concrete pumps. I know the jobs that make me happy, we call them trophy jobs. Ones that hit the radar, meaning that many mercantile firms have worked on it. The financier would try three months with this firm, six months with that firm, three months with this firm. He tried every agent in Sydney through different firms and agencies. It came back to me three times. It was the only one that no one could get. He was a Greek guy. His best friend went to jail he took the car. His name was Paris, handyman or painter or something. This is another con man to me. A real grub of a human being. I was dealing with him when Greece was going through the recession and he was telling me stuff like, my money's in Greece, the banks won't release it. The excuses were wild. You know, members of the family are dying. My mum's funeral, my mum just passed. I think he killed his mum about a hundred times within a year. He was gonna kill me in the end. That's how much he stressed me out. And he never show up. This guy would always answer his phone, but never do the right thing. He never wanted to give the car back and always said, I'm gonna pay for it. And I used to tell him, you have no rights to the car. He knew that he wasn't liable for it. He knew that we couldn't hurt him. He had the registration paper, so he was always keeping it up to date with Reggio and insurance, except it was never at the registered address where he'd register it. Until one day, the job came back around. I got a call from Skip Locators. He said, Joey, this guy's just registered at a new address in Marrickville. And I said, dead set, what's the address? I went there, it was after hours. I wasn't allowed to repossess, but I didn't give a shit. Why should I play rules with this guy, play by the book when he's got no rights to the car, shouldn't even have it? Who cares if I'm an hour late? I seen it and it was like a bloody miracle. I said, I can't believe it. I'm looking at the car. Now it was those little streets in Marigville where, you know, you can park one car on one side and the other side, there's no car to be parked because they're little narrow streets and you can barely get through. So the tow truck came and we had to angle the cable to actually rip it out this way, then to drag it up the tray. So we had to angle the cables to pull it out and get it out between two cars. He's seen and heard the tow truck. He came running out. I was standing on the tow truck. I said, Paris, game over, buddy. Go fuck your dad. That's exactly what I said to him. He ran straight up to me and threw a punch at me. <laughs> and we just ended up punching on, but it felt good. I didn't care. I said to the tow, we don't get involved. We're just gonna have it out. And then he started, I'm going to the police. I said, you go, I'm gonna get you charged for assault, you dickhead. I've been talking to this prick for almost two years and all he's done is lie to me. I was happy to go to jail. But when I rang my guy, you know, the guy I work for, he was like, you fucking beauty. I swear, he went around, I was getting congratulations from people in different states. That was a trophy job. Do you wonder where Paris is now? I don't care. You see, people say, Joe, have you got enemies? If you're gonna call that weasel an enemy, so be it. I'm happy to walk the streets with no clothes on, looking for him. They don't scare me, these guys. They should be scared of me. I'm the guy hunting them. They're the guys hiding from me. And after I finish my business, why should things change? He's still the same weasel that's been hiding from me for two years. Why should I be scared? I don't see the reason. That's his nature. This is my nature. 
put us in the wild, I don't know who's to be scared of who. It's certainly not me. I'm always honest. I never lie to myself. I'm a very honest person. You ask me the question, I'll give you the answer. I mean, people might look at me and assume, people might hear stories and might have a hundred questions or a hundred different theories about who I am or where I've been or whatever the fuck ever, I couldn't give a shit. Ask me, I'll tell you the truth. I never lie. My secret is the truth.